What's up everyone, you guys got the Barakage of the Hidden Gainesville. Today I'm bringing you guys what I honestly think is going to be my most helpful video to date, and that is what I'm calling the Calisthenics Roadmap. In this video, I'm going to be outlining a path that you can take from zero, just starting to hopefully my level and maybe even beyond that, whatever your goals are. Obviously, this is going to be very oversimplified and there's a lot of different paths you can take to get a high level, but I think that this is one of the good ones and I think that this video will be beneficial to a lot of you, especially if you're just starting. So let's get into it. Step one is, of course, mindset. You need to have the right mindset when you're going going into training. And there's a couple things that you really need to be aware of. The first is that it is probably going to take a very long time to reach your goals. And you need to just come to terms with that. And one good way to make this manageable and, and more accepting is to set a lot of short-term goals. A short-term goal might be something that you can achieve in a month or a week or a couple weeks. I think you get the point. Just in a quick time frame and short-term goals will keep you motivated to train for your long-term goal. The next important mindset tip is you need to just be aware and accept the fact that you will fail probably a lot. And that's okay. That's actually a good thing. That is, in my opinion, the best way to learn. I've been training for eight years and I still fail every single day session. <laughs> it's just part of it. All right. So once again, to some mindset before we get into the next step, it's going to take a long time and you're going to fail. But once you accept these things, they are not an issue. So you need the right mindset. Up next is, well, I guess step two, but it's kind of step one for the actual training. And that is to build your foundation. And the foundation with calisthenics is of course, basic exercises such as pull-ups, push-ups, and dips. And I recommend that everybody should start with basics because once you do basics and you build your foundation, you are going to be able to progress with skills faster when you are ready to move on to your skill training. And you also increase the potential strength you can gain in certain skills, the better you are at basics. So one of the most important questions in regards to basics is when am I ready to move on from basics? And there's not really a set number for this. I will give some numbers just for an example a little later on in the video. I tell people that it's it's time to move on from basics when you get bored of them. And you need at least some discipline with this because obviously you can't just do push-ups for two weeks and be like, okay, I'm bored with basics. Let's do planche push-ups now. No, you gotta, once you get to the point where you're doing basics and it's really easy for you and adding extra reps is just not exciting, that's when I would consider you to be bored of basics basics and you can move on from them. But I would say like, if you guys do want numbers, I would say 10 complete full range of motion pull-ups without a kip. So that's starting in lockout, going to your chins over the bar 10 times without any kipping. Uh, 20 clean dips, again, no momentum going at least to 90 degree elbow bend, maybe even lower. And then 30 reps of push-ups, good form, no pausing in between each like no long pauses in between reps on those pushes. I think when you get to that point, you're good with basics, you're bored of them, and it's time to move on to some skills. So let's talk about skills, which is step three, or I guess step two in terms of the actual training, because remember step one was the mindset, guys. Okay, and once again, guys, with skills, there are a lot of different paths that you can take. But I'm gonna share with one with you guys that I think is good. This is kind of the way that I did it and I do recommend it. I, even though this was a while ago for me, obviously I do think this is still a good method. So in my opinion, the first skill that you should try to learn is the muscle. The reason for this is because if you have a strong foundation in basics, the muscle is not really going to be a very hard skill for you to learn. And you go through that journey and you get your first taste of what it feels like to unlock a move. And you're going to now, now that you know how good that feels, you're going to want to chase that feeling with other harder moves. And I'm telling you right now that the longer and harder the journey is to getting a certain skill, the better that feeling is when you unlock it. So since the muscle ups easy, it's a good motivator. It'll tell you that you are good at this and you can keep going. Uh, the muscle up is also a great way to train explosive pushing and pulling strength. And also since you're moving your body through 
quite a large space. It helps you with body coordination and control, which can help with a lot of other more advanced skills. So even now, I still recommend that if you're starting out, muscle up is a great first skill to learn. Okay, up next, after you learn your muscle up, hopefully, and you can do these concurrently, like I said, guys, there's tons of ways to do this, but after you learn your muscle up, let's say you're now ready to start some other skills. I would say front lever would be next. Front lever and handstand. Now, the front lever is a very important skill because it is the foundation of all of the super advanced pulling skills. So you're gonna wanna start your front lever journey early, get good at it, and then you'll have an easier time when you are ready to train like the really hard skills at a front lever, okay? Front lever and also handstand. I actually would recommend doing these concurrently because that's what I did, and they don't really interfere with each other when you're training. And handstand is a great way to practice balance and again, build up some good shoulder strength. Uh, the other lever I did want to talk about is the back lever. I do believe that this is optional at this point because with back lever, we're really going to hit a lot of that strength when we're training planche. But if you have time for it and want to incorporate into your training at this point, you can definitely do that. And training back lever will give you a nice head start when you are finally ready to begin your planche journey. So that leads us into the next skill, which is planche. And now this is interesting because I know what you guys are thinking. We're starting planche pretty late late in our journey here, but I want you guys to consider this. Let's say you were just starting and planche, you have no training experience whatsoever, and planche is just what you start doing. You've never trained before and you go in and you just start training for planche. And let's say one year after that day is when you finally get it. Okay, you finally did it. But let's say you did this method, you started, you, you built a foundation, for maybe two or three months, however long it took, okay? You got your muscle up, took a month, <laughs> okay? Now we're at four months. Got your front lever in another three months, okay? That's seven months. And then now you train planche and you get it in, well, we'll say four or five months from that point. Well, guess what? The guy who followed this method not only has a good foundation, is strong in pushing and pulling movements, also he technically got his planche in half the time and has a lot of other strength too, whereas this other guy went through this long road, probably got injured a bunch <laughs> and had motivational issues, but still did push through and got it. But what I'm saying is guys, it's the same time frame. So sure, we're starting planche a little later, but in my opinion, you're investing in a safe uh, training situation than some guy who's just starting planche zero experience. So you can think what you want. I do think that this is a good method. Anyway, now we're finally ready to move on to planche and sorry about that guys. I had a small interruption and had to move locations. Uh, unprofessional, I know, yada, yada, yada. But anyway, so anyway, speaking of planche, we are now ready to move on to planche in this roadmap. And when you're training planche, number one rule, start with P-bars and stick with P-bars, training on P-bars for planche first is really important. And there's a couple reasons for this. Number one, it is the easiest variation of the skill. You can, that means you're gonna be able to do your longest holds of your progressions or bands. However you're training planche, you're gonna be able to do your longest holds on the parallel bars. And you're also going to be able to do the most reps of each of your planche exercises when you're training on parallel bars. That means you're gonna be gaining more strength training on parallel bars. And guess what guys, the parallel bar variation still has good carryover to the other variants when you're ready to move on. And if you're really good on parallel bars, you're not gonna have a hard time moving to floor. Take it from me in my experience, when I was training planche, I thought it was the best idea to mix it up. So I would train on P-bars for a little bit where I had a shaky hold and then I would try on floor and just couldn't do it at all. Like I was just mixing it up too much and it didn't work well. And now it's like you just stick with one, get really good at it and then move on to the others. All right, guys. So those are kind of the intro skills. Planche, front lever, back lever, handstand, very foundational skill movements. And now we're ready to move on to step four or again, 
maybe step three of the roadmap. <laughs> and that is the advanced skills. Now keep in mind, we've probably been training for about a year now, and we have a good solid five second front lever hold and a five second planche hold. And we're, we wanna know what the next step is. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna start adding some dynamic aspects to our planche and front lever holds. And some great exercises to do this is of course, the planche press and the planche push up, and also the front lever press and the front lever pull up. Not only are these hard dynamic skills, but they are also very good for strengthening the hold and just getting better at the movement overall. So I would say once you have five seconds of full planche, five seconds of front lever, it is time to move on to the dynamic elements, planche push ups, front lever pull. So let's see you do that. Again, it's been maybe another six or so months. You've been practicing hard. You've gotten some reps of planche push-ups with pretty good form. You, you can do front lever pull-ups. You can do planche presses. You're good. And that leads us in to the final step of the calisthenics roadmap. Step five, if you count the mindset step, or step four, if you don't count that step. And that is called fun. And with this, you can really take things however you want. There's a lot of routes you can take. Let's say you wanna go down sort of a pull skill route. So you're already pretty good at front lever pull-ups. Like I said, you can do them for, re for reps. Let's say you wanna learn some pull skills. Maybe start with a touch front. Get good at the touch front lever, move on to straight arm touch. Get really good at straight arm touch. Maybe move on some move on to some dynamic elements in a straight arm touch, such as Caruso, you could do maybe even wide front lever pull-ups, stuff like that. Let's say you want to learn Victorian. Well, you, again, you're, you're strong in your front lever. You can do front lever pull-ups. You worked on your straight arm touch, and now you can practice Victorian on parallel bars and then eventually move on to rings. And then if you get insanely freaking good at that, you can move on to dynamics in Victorian on rings like Caruso, Victorian rays, like the really freaking crazy skills. Say you want to go down a pusher rack, out. And again, in, again, guys, like I recommend not picking to be a pusher or a puller, but incorporating both. I, th that wording was actually pretty bad on my part. Just basically just train whichever push and pull skills that you're interested in, but make sure you are incorporating both push and pull in your training in some way. Let's say again, you wanna learn some advanced push skills. So you've been working on planche push-ups for a while. You can do planche push-ups for reps. Let's add some range of motion to them. Let's try some deep planche push-ups. And then once you get good at deep planche push-ups, try a pelican. Uh, again, let's say you wanna, your planche hold is really solid, like I said. Why don't, why not try some wide planche and then get good at that move on to Maltese, maybe some Maltese dynamics. I think you guys get the point. And then here is when I'd recommend maybe starting some different variations as well, such as floor, straight bar variants. Um, you can also, at this point, mess around with other skills like Hephaesto, Iron Cross, but I would say be careful with these skills. But anyway, guys, that is all five steps of this calisthenics roadmap that I thought of. If you guys like the video, please like it, share it with your friends if you thought it was helpful and they're interested in starting calisthenics. Um, also, link down below is a link to Calisthenics Pro Shop. They just released some new P-Bars that I think are really high quality. I'm going to be switching to them. And if you're in the market for P-Bars, I would highly recommend checking them out in Calisthenics Pro. They also have wrist wraps, elbow sleeves, and getting from there and using the code BARCOG10 really helps support the channel and I would appreciate it. Uh, once again, guys, please like the video if you did. Hit me with the subscribe, no jutsu, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces.